everybody? How's it going? Today, we're going to have a look at Aghanim's game. This is a new custom game that is sort of a re-release slash successor slash iteration of Dota Online Tactics Arena, which is a game we played a little while ago. It's also made by the same developer, by Set. And you can see this is just a game that's available here. Now, we are currently loaded into the lobby of the game which is what you get when you load into the match. So it's a little bit weird. Usually when you play a custom game, what you do is you go into the Dota 2 arcade, you open a lobby there, people join your lobby, and then you play through that system. Aghanim's game works differently, though. In Aghanim's game, you go and just load in on your own right away, and then you play through inbuilt matchmaking in here. So you can see I click play and then I can find opponent or play against a friend or play against the AI. And there's like 12 different levels of AI. I can do a practice match. And then of course here's like a little setup thing. So you can come in here and you can see all of your units and what they have and what abilities they have. And don't worry, I'll explain how all of this works in a moment. First, I want to just kind of showcase just how beautiful it is. And after I'm done using my setup, I can just click menu and it takes me right back into the main menu. And I navigate everything from here. So this is really the space from which everything runs. As you can see, the game is ridiculously beautiful. It is incredibly well made. And it is honestly just an absolute pleasure to look at. If we even have a little look at what it looks like when we go into a match, let me just go ahead and select Challenge 11. So you can see we have now loaded in and we are ready to play against another player. And this is what the board looks like when we play. If I resign though, then you can see there's like a fancy little death animation, right? Victory animation. And then I can go back to the main menu. And it all gets rebuilt, all of the units are removed, and we're back. Isn't that crazy? Right? It's super cool. There's even like lots of funny details, like over here is a little Rubik, right? It's very, very nice. So, let's go ahead and just play around. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and go into practice for a moment so I can show you how it works. The core idea of this game is a turn-based tactics game if that is something that you know helps you but the way this basically works is you have a lineup of units and you can choose freely from what those units are right you can go into setup and swap units out, out as you like and place new ones and place them in new positions and so on there's some rules for that but honestly that's something you can find out on your own how that works just go into the setup play around with it a little bit I have my lineup here that I've played a little bit and that I kind of know how to play, so we're going to stick to this. Now, there's a variety of different types of units. Uh, mostly, they are free. I personally would classify them as free different types of units. There are supporting units, then there are towers, and then there are just fighting units. So, a tower is something like this right here. A tower can't really move, although I can change its positioning if I want, but a tower can't really move. And the tower can attack things. So I'm just going to go ahead and start this match here, right? So I can select this tower and you can now see its attack range. And I can say, ah, I want to attack everything here or I want to attack everything over there. It has this chaining effect. This tower can exact, uh, attack this right here. Or, of course, I have other units that I can use, right? For example, if I use this Earthshaker, I can move him over there. Or I can use this guy to move in over here. For now, let's use this tower because it's got this nice chaining effect that will do a lot of damage to all of these units and just slam that in here. So I click this and it's going to shoot and you can see now it did its damage. Now here are some changes from this mode to the previous mode. You can see that we got gold for this. This is visible in the top left corner and there's a little shop so we can buy items from this shop using this gold and we will be using some of that later on. Am I going to do anything? I don't know if the practice here is really... Oh, yeah, it wants me to do something. Yes, okay. I was wondering how the practice works. So this practice mode has me doing things. That makes sense, right? So I can now, for example, say I want to use this tower to attack this guy. No, he's taking some damage. But, of course, I also have units that can move around. So, for example, the Shadow Fiend can move. This guy can move. So I could have my Earthshaker move over here. He jumps in there, and then I can use his slam ability, which does a whole bunch of damage to everything there. 
right? We have now dealt damage to all of these units. Then we can choose which direction we want to face. That is relevant for some units, although not all of them. And, you know, then it kind of goes from there. Now, the Earthshaker is currently on cooldown. Same for this tower. You can see there's these little stars above the Earthshaker's head and above this tower's head. For each star, that unit is on one round cooldown. So you need to wait until you can use them again. And that's just one of the aspects that the units have. So every unit has HP, every unit has, has power, defense, and they have a wait time. And the wait time is really important because it indicates how long you need to wait for the unit to be usable again. Obviously, right? Makes sense. Now, when you are fighting, your goal is to kill all of your opponent's stuff. It's really that simple. You want to take down everything your opponent has. So you can see I already did a whole bunch of damage to these units, but of course I want to deal more damage. I want to take them down so I can use this tower here. Wait, is it not my turn? No, it is the other me's turn. Apology. <laughs> so I can use this guy and come in here and attack this. And now it is my turn again. And I can use this to blast here. But what we just got is another new feature. You can see there are these runes. So this is why I have this fella here. So I can have this guy come running in here. Pick up this rune. Cool, we get 50 gold. Then I can, for example, go into the shop. Buy this force staff, which is an item I can use. And you can use items anytime during your turn. You can buy them anytime you like. So and then I could go and activate this force staff on this. Which then pushes him one unit forward. Right, and now we have used those 50 gold that we just got. Anyway, let's get ourselves into an actual game. Alright, let's reset this and let's play against another player. To make sure we play against a chat, I'm gonna go ahead and play friend and then click host. And then I can click reveal here and so you can see there's just a number. So now chat can just type in this number and challenge me. And then we will be playing against somebody. And you can see, again, it all works from within the screen. We never have to leave it. We never have to do anything else. It is actually kind of incredible. All right, so we're fighting against Donaldos. And, ooh, that's a Roshan. That's kind of scary, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bit of a bit of a spooky little lineup here. Never played before. Perfect. <laughs> Pop off. I mean, I just explained how it works. <laughs> I have faith in you, my friend. But yes, again, the goal is to take down all of your opponent's units. Right? And you want to just kill everything they have. Now, you can see that we both have some towers, we have some units, and then, as I mentioned earlier, there are some supporting units, and then there's some more offensive units. So, for example, this unit right here, this Holy Knight, doesn't have any attacking ability, really, but he can apply a really nice, really powerful healing effect. And, uh, oh, you just hit that cluster, okay? I'm just gonna go ahead and shoot right back. This is nice. It's just this little chaining effect. It's generally very useful and when I can throw it out, I like to do it as often as I can because it's actually quite a lot of damage for the cost. But of like the cost being like one turn. Does that kind of make sense? Oh no, there's the Earth Shaker. Okay, so this is not going great. That was a lot of damage to all of my stuff, but the Earth Shaker is in a bad spot now. So I can immediately showcase the Holy Knight, I suppose. I will move this guy over here. Just get him out of range a little bit. And then I can use this healing effect, which will apply a heal to all of my units, which is, of course, particularly good if I am not uh, anywhere near death range in any of these units, right? So we just took a little bit of damage, but that little bit of damage was pretty much healed off immediately. So you can see we're actually looking perfectly healthy on nearly all of these units. Now, allow me to explain my strategy a little bit. My strategy is this guy. This is the Ancient Entity. Now, the Ancient Entity has an ability, just like all of the units do. You can see if I hover over here, it shows me everything that the ability does. Or like every everything that the unit does, sorry. So what's important about this Ancient Entity is this Bash ability. Stuns and damages a piece, one tile from the attacker. So it's basically just an attack, except it's a guaranteed Bash. This means the Ancient Entity can become incredibly overwhelmingly powerful if you give it a bunch of stuff. By itself, it's actually not that strong. It's kind of weak on its own because it doesn't have much in terms of stats yet. It's just got a good amount of HP, but nothing else. So my general plan here 
is going to involve moving this ancient entity into this area a lot to pick up these runes as they spawn because the runes are permanent boosts. Now, the first rune is just gold, so it's not that exciting, although we do still have to pick it up because it will still offer us um, a little bit of bonus gold, but most importantly, we need to free up the space. If we don't free up the space, then we won't actually uh, spawn another rune. But the other runes that spawn are really, really good. They are just incredibly useful and we do want to go for them. So that's kind of the plan. We're going to use this ancient entity to kind of move it back and forth on the rune spot while we use the rest of our units and particularly our towers to defend it. And then hopefully eventually it will be nice and strong so that it can take on pretty much anything our opponent is going to throw at it. And that's the plan. Now, I'm hoping that after I've explained this, Donaldus isn't going to take this as an opportunity to go and ruin my entire strategy. <laughs> He's a little bit all in on the ancient entity, although there are some other units that can fulfill a similar role. No, okay, it seems we are going for the ancient entity. Well, that's bad. I'm not happy about this. Okay. Hey, Mr. Coffee. Nice day. Thank you very much. So this Dragonite moved in to punch our ancient entity. That's not great. And we need to figure out what we do about this. Um, I think first we need to actually start being a bit aggressive, right? We want to actually start attacking. Now, I have this outpost here. What this does is it makes it so that one of our units uh, becomes much more uh, powerful in a defensive way, which is nice. Hmm... What do we do? I'm kind of thinking I'll use the barrier, actually. Yeah. So this makes it so that our ancient entity is now protected. Which is, of course, what we're looking for. So Donaldos can't just keep attacking it. We can I see what abilities my units have. You just click on the unit and then you hover over its icon. And then you can see there's a bit of a description. Every unit can move around with their abilities. It's nice and simple. Okay. So we need to figure out what our opponent does, and then we go from there. Um, I think that's really like most of the game. Right. To be honest, it's not that different from Dota Online Tactics Arena. It's just got more refinement added into it and it is at its core just a tactics game also this is what we're looking for so you got a power rune this right here gives a unit plus two power right now we already have a good amount of power so this is not that important but i still want it um i'm gonna buy a tumblers toy because i can use this onto you which will push it across Okay, so that didn't work the way I wanted it to. <laughs> I guess we'll just move it back into the field, though. Huh. Suppose it could be worse. All right. <laughs> that wasn't what I had in mind, but I guess it's fine. <laughs> I thought it would pick it up, but I didn't. I guess it makes sense, right? The tumbler toy does yeet you a little bit. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Not much of an issue. <laughs> but it is kind of funny. Oh, man. Okay. There's the Earthshaker again. Yeah, Earthshaker's gonna do some damage. Although I'm not so worried about the Shaker because we can actually just heal that off. I want to keep my Ancient Entity protected. So I need to... I think I need to just shoot this guy. Because then I can probably just kill this Dragon Knight next turn with the Ancient Entity if it sticks around. That would be fine. Uh, 
And uh, I don't know how I feel about this cluster over here. I think if I go and reposition my units later, I'm gonna need to split this up a little bit so they are a bit further apart from each other, right? Because I think having them all on top of each other like this is just asking for a bit of punishment, yeah? <laughs> okay, and then we... Is my ancient entity ready? Okay, I can also immediately go to damage and I can attack this. Now, if I attack it from the front, there is a chance to block because that's what the orientating does. So I can go into moving and I can like move in here and attack it from the side. That still didn't kill. Oh man, but it does at the very least make it so that it is stunned and I should be able to kill it with this tower next turn. I need to get rid of this. I need to get rid of this Dragon Knight. You choose the starting arrangements? Yes, you can fully choose what units you have. There's a whole bunch of Playing them. Playing any Dota butts after this? Hey, Sleep Paddock. No, sorry, it's already getting a bit late. But you can choose however many units you... Uh, sorry, you can choose uh, whichever units you want to use. You can choose wherever you want them to start. Although there's certain restrictions to where certain units can go. I'm actually not too familiar with what exactly those are. But there are some restrictions. But overall, yeah, it is up to you. All right, let's shoot this. There. Oh, it killed the rune. Well, that's wonky. <laughs> Look at me learning new stuff as we go along. That's okay. I'm actually less fast about the durability rune. That one just gives some additional HP. And I mean, additional HP is nice, but it's not that important. Oh, I'm about to get fucked up by this Earthshaker, am I not? We did kill the Dragon Knight at the very least, but... This guy is, is just... A problem. Oh no, what's that? Oh, he's got a... Blade Mail now. Yeah, 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 that's this right here. Returns 40% of physical magic damage taken as magic damage to the attacker. And... Uh, okay. Alright, our Chen is still chilling here. Which is good, because I can just move this guy. I'm gonna move him all the way over here, so he's kind of a bit out of range. And then we just slam the heal again. Keep everybody nice and healthy. At least as best as we can. And then I think we've got to start being a bit more proactive around here. I mean, the good news is that we took care of the Dragon Knight. That is what was immediately threatening our ancient entity. And as I already mentioned, that's kind of like a big piece of our strategy. So I wanted to make sure that that's taken care of. But we do want to make sure that we're actually killing our stuff and fighting for our stuff because we need gold. Specifically, we need 275 so we can buy ourselves this bad boy. <laughs> I want to get myself an Aghanim Scepter. This is an incredibly useful item to have. And um, would be very, very good to put on this ancient entity. Okay. Uh, Donaldus, keep in mind, there is a timer. Can't take forever on your turns, right? You only, only got 30 seconds remaining here. It's, uh, I guess it's you down there, you can see. Here you go. But there is, uh, there is a timer, only 20 seconds remaining. You gotta make a choice, my friend. Alright, our Dragon Knight is just taking punishment. There we go, it's a regeneration rune. So this is a great one. It gives the unit plus one health regen, right? That's fantastic. Because it makes it so that our ancient entity now doesn't need to be actively healed. It will just get healed passively. That's gonna be particularly amazing once we give it the Aghanim Scepter, because then it's gonna be more healing, which is great. Okay, Luna coming in. This is actually fine with me because I'm planning to have this guy like jump in around here somewhere. Okay, yes. Uh, we're bringing you in here, nice and center. And yeah, let's just do a slam. Good amount of damage, right? Feel good about that. The Earthshaker has moved out of this bad spot as well. I'm a bit worried about all of this here. Like, honestly, the Shadow Fiend, this Wind Witch Twist. 
not good. It's not looking so good, guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, this Earthshaker is just absolutely destroying us. Okay, we lost our, one of our units. Okay. So Shadow Fiend has 6 HP left. Can this tower attack? This tower can attack. I think I just shoot in here. Oh, it's still... Ah, sorry, it actually can't attack right now. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't sure if that little circle thing was above my tower or if it was above the ammo tower. Okay. Hmm. I think I move the Dragon Knight over here and start punching this. And there's a haste rune. Very good. So you can see this rune down here was blocked because somebody's standing on top of it. That's something I'm trying to avoid. Alright. Ah. And it goes down. So. Hmm. I do need to pick this up. But I do want to deal with, like, some of this at the very least. If I slam this here, it does kill this. It does kill the Wind Ranger too. Is that okay? So I can undo my movement here. Because I can just slam it like so and get these two kills. I think I will. And then I can move this guy a little bit away. Okay. So we have our Aghanim Scepter now. <clears throat> yeah, I can't do that during my opponent's turn. Now this may all seem a little weird, but I actually think we're still in this. I actually think we still have a shot at it. Just because, again, the ancient entity that we're setting up will give us so much control. <laughs> oh, that's an Aghanim Scepter for the Earthshaker. And an attack. Okay, good. Alright, so we start out by giving you this. And then we need to... I mean, I would like to be able to just do this. Hmm. It won't kill anything. No, I think I need to move. I want to pick this up. I don't know when the next rune spawns, but I'm sure it's gonna be soon. And I do want to make sure that I'm ready for it. I, we finally caught you on a day off. Hey, Drusy. It's okay. <laughs> it's not great, but it's okay. There we go. So we've got the armor rune here. So I'm glad that I did it. So now our guy will have plus 10 armor. And now this is where we're starting to get powerful. Because we now have no wait time. And when we attack, we stun. So we can now just kill this Earthshaker. <laughs> and like our ancient entity is gonna take some damage while doing that but that's okay because it's got healing Ooh. luckily towers are pretty tough they can take some hits right so my ancient entity is healing and usually you have to wait but because of the agonims my ancient entity now doesn't have a wait time so I can just keep punching and that's it. Okay. And then we want to buy like some of this stuff here. Particularly, I want lifesteal. We get some lifesteal on the ancient entity. Now it needs to worry even less about taking some damage. 
and you can see it's it's got plus 25 armor right now it's already got a lot of hp it doesn't have the wait time anymore and that of course allows us to just use it very aggressively and let us do whatever we want with it we can also put the blade mail on it we can put the bkb on it we can put the face boots on it Aegis isn't as good because it loses all the items when it returns, so we don't care about the Aegis, really. Alright, um, we're gonna kill this guy right now. I want to make sure that this Earthshaker is taken care of. Alright, and then we can move our Ancient Entity up here. Have it face this way, because here's the Arcane Rune. And we... Actually, I should have positioned myself here. We already have no wait, wait time, but that's okay. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and pick up the Bloodstone. So, you know, like, the runes and the uh, new items, they really open up a lot more strategies, which I find super cool. Super interesting, right? Okay. So, uh, we give you this... And I'm going to go ahead and use another force staff here to just, you know, make sure that this is taken care of. Because I actually want to attack with one of these. I wonder if I can chain this in a nice way. Hmm. This is better, right? Okay. Good, good, good. Do you think we can win? <laughs> I have one unit. <laughs> I have one guy. <laughs> but my one guy is pretty good. My one guy is pretty alright. And I can heal him. With items, with his dummy. Yeah, it's a barricade. Alright. I did kill that Earthshaker, and the Earthshaker had a lot of resources on it. But it is worth keeping in mind that uh, Donaldos also has a lot more resources just available because more of my units have been killed. Oh, that's actually great. That's actually fantastic. These two towers are both stunned right now. Good. That's a kill. Let me see if there's any particular item I care about right now. I don't think I do. No. No. Alright. We're chilling. So this is at 13 HP, 28, 57. So Roshan is obviously the scariest unit here. But Roshan is also... Roshan is a little weird. He is just a big body. He does a good amount of AoE damage, but he's not actually that good at, like, one-on-one -on -one fights. You can see it's 14 damage. 14 damage is nice, but it's also not enough to actually, like, really win anything. And also, this is great, because now I can move up here to be out of range for these towers and just start perma-bashing Roshan. Yeah, I'm just saving up towards that. I want to get that blade mail. Or maybe I should go for the BKB. No, I think I'll go for Blade Mail first. Okay. Uh, that will be it. <laughs> so now we'll just beat up Roshan. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Donaldus. Donaldus. Oh, no, Donaldus. Be careful. Shadow Fiend is very powerful, as you saw earlier. He's got really long lines of attack, and they do quite a lot of damage. And when Shadow Fiend kills something, he actually gets permanent power. But Shadow Fiend is squishy, which is a problem he has. If I go here and attack the Shadow Fiend, can I kill him? No. Well, I'm more worried about the Shadow Fiend, though, and I'm still out of attack range. Hmm... 
Is this magic damage is the question? This is a magic spell, yeah. It's a magic spell. Okay, I'm saving for BKB. I'm saving for BKB. Yeah, Shadow Fiend is kind of a snowballing hero. If you manage to get kills on him, then he actually can move again and he gets a permanent power boost, which is pretty good. Ah, smart. Smart, smart, smart. Well, I'm just going to attack Rashan then. Like, I don't think I need to worry too much about some damage right now. I'm at full HP, 65 damage. There's no way Shadow Fiend does that much. I do need to figure out a way to actually deal with the Shadow Fiend, though. Okay, good. That's fine. If you want to move him away, I'm happy. Shadow Fiend is also magic damage, though, right? Yeah, this is magic. And what about Luna? Luna is physical, so she's the only physical unit still left. But that's okay. It's really cool that you can like undo and then, you know, just it, it resets everything. It's just so well made. This really just doesn't even feel like an arcade game, doesn't it? Okay. I need one more gold. That's kind of not great. Um, I'm going to move up here. And beat Roshan over the head. Pick up our BKB. Then we're going to go ahead and equip the BKB. So now we've got some additional resistance there. And then we're done. And we can actually just stall a bunch now. Because we will heal up passively. But... I think our best play is probably to rush in and kill this tower and then take one hit from this and then kill Shadow Fiend. I don't think that there's enough damage there to kill me. Alright, the Luna just doesn't do it. So I'm not too worried about her. I have this tower, which is not in range, sadly. <laughs> it would be nice to have it be in range. So you can see it's a very strategic game. And, you know, that's going to appeal to some people and not appeal to others. Right? It's not like a very action-focused game. I think that's fine. Uh, so I don't need to worry about this immediately. This tower doesn't actually do that much damage. But I think I will still kill this tower right now. Bash this tower down. Because it gives me a bunch of gold. And I can invest into a blade mail. Because now my guy also has that effect. Also, I like how the BKB gives him bees. <laughs> Did you guys notice? He's got some bees. <laughs> but yeah, we have... I mean, a whole bunch of items on this guy now. Definitely our late game carry. The nice thing about these towers is that they do have a very long wait time. So, my current plan is to just take a hit. That's fine. Then I come in here and I kill Shadow Fiend. And that's fine. Then the Luna is probably going to come in and attack me. And at that point, I bash down the Luna. And then I just need to take down the Dragon Tower on the Luna. Outpost doesn't fight after all, so that's not a problem. Oh, what was that? Oh, an Aegis. Ooh, okay. That could potentially be a problem. We do have a lot of HP still. Am I better off... I think I'm gonna kill this tower first. Can I kill this tower? How quickly can I kill this tower? Uh, I'm down two damage. Okay, wait. I have an idea. I can use this. Which will let me... 
put down uh, a little, little health potion, which recovers just 5 HP. But I think we are fine recovering just 5 HP right now. And I will prioritize getting this tower. Because I think the main problem we might face here is just be being attacked by two units. As long as it's just one unit, we always win. Even with the resurrection, I just don't think there's enough damage there. Oh, okay. All right, we're taking down the supporting cast first. <laughs> I respect it. Okay, let's just go ahead and uh, take down the tower. I can still move, which means I will move up here. Actually, let me undo that really quick. Do I have full HP? I don't quite have full HP. So I will buy another one of these. It's not a lot of HP we're healing here. We're actually being inefficient. But I think at this point it doesn't matter if we're being inefficient. Right? We just want to make sure that my guy stays alive. Because we would heal up two points anyway at the start of our turn, but like, what if we get attacked now? Then that might not even be enough, and it's fine. Right? There's no reason to take a risk. It's not like there's anything else we need the money for right now. So I'm perfectly happy to just go like this. I couldn't attack again. I did already attack, right? Always important to keep that in mind. <clears throat> can you only have one unit attack per turn? You can only move and interact with one unit a turn. So you can't do multiple... You can't do things with multiple units every turn. So if I want to use this guy, I can't use anything else. <laughs> <laughs> come here, come here, come here, let me fight. I do wonder what the edges looks like. Come here, come here. Let me, let me attack, I want to attack. Alright. Alright, alright, alright. I'm waiting. Okay, move. Punch. There we go. Oh, that is in range for this, though. So that buff could be applied, yeah. Well, I'm just gonna go down here and beat the shit out of that, then. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> Anything else we wanna buy? Face boots. I mean, it doesn't really matter at this point, right? Let's go. Ooh, this dragon tower will go down here. So it is actually very close, just in terms of, like, units available. We both only have one guy. Well, I suppose I have my little outpost here, but I'm not entirely sure if that counts all that much. Oh, I can't catch up. You're too far away. Alright, gonna go ahead and put some boots on there. They don't help anymore, but I just like the animations. So I'm gonna go ahead and see what this one looks like. <laughs> Look at that, that's so cute. Alright, I can't attack right now. That's funny, it's just like... Yeets you in there. Good plan. Okay. There's only one unit for both players now. Alright, come here. She does resurrect. I gotta say, I am actually kind of surprised that my weird ancient entity strat ended up winning this. But, hey, I guess we managed to pull through in the end. What I did is definitely not a good strategy, though. I mean... You saw how much damage all of my units just took based on all of the AoE flying around. It's just all a little bit silly. Can, can you... Excuse you? <laughs> Why are you running? Why are you running? Come back here. 
I'm gonna buy a four staff too. I'm coming for you. I think I can still make it, yeah, with the four staff. Your turn. Use this, equip. And then get ourselves that final fateful attack in. While that doesn't immediately kill, um, our opponent can't do anything anymore. So you can see the turn is being skipped automatically. There we go! We got it! Even got ranked system. Look at that. Very fancy. Even got an inbuilt leaderboard, which doesn't display anything right now. <laughs> well, it's not perfect, but I think this is really as close to like a proper game inside of Dota as we ever gonna get. It's crazy, right? Uh, this is the kind of thing where I look at it and I'm just, I just ask myself, why did you even make it in Dota? Just make a whole game, right? But anyway, that's Agonim's game. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to play the game, right? Just look for it in the arcade. I'm sure you can find it. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Goodbye.